Hi, my name is uh, Pastor Joe Cotinola, and this is my beautiful wife, Doreen Cotinola. And today we're going to be talking about the subject of faith and the importance of faith and how it affects our lives. And so um, there's a, we're really excited about this because we know that faith is such an important thing, right, babe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. it is. And what does the Bible say about faith? It says you can't please God without faith, right? Yes. Uh, Hebrews 11, 6, it says, and without faith, it is it's impossible. Impossible, isn't that? That's interesting. To please God. Yeah. So, in other words, we lift our hands, we pray, we worship. All those things are pleasing to God. The way we live, uh, the meditation of our heart. The Bible talks about the words of our mouth. But also, it's so clear that it says, "Without faith, it's impossible mm -hmm. to please God." And you know, over the years, I've learned, and you know, um, I think we have learned on this journey of faith because it is a journey of faith. Um, the Christian walk is that. Everything functions by faith mm -hmm. uh, to believe God, to trust God uh, for things yeah. that we're praying for and just everyday life, faith, you know, here on earth, this faith, it moves the hand of God. I used to hear, you know, it's interesting because I used to hear people say, um, God will meet you at the point of your need. But I've come to realize it doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible. It does say he's, he'll supply all our needs, mm -hmm. but he meets us at the point of our faith, mm -hmm. right? Because Jesus said, Without faith, um, you know, he says, uh, faith that is what moves the hand of God. And he says, according to your faith, Jesus said, mm -hmm. be it so unto you. Yeah. And there's so many scriptures about faith. And Jesus talks so much about faith, little faith. He said, you have little faith. Yeah. And he says, because you have great faith, you know, it is done. And so I think that faith is so important in a Christian's life. It's it's one of the most important things. Um, you know, I think the opposite of faith is fear, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and as human beings, we have to move despite our fears. We have to step out in faith. How many how many times have you stepped out in faith? Oh God, I need a calculator. <laughs> and I think even the calculator would burn out. But you know, it's interesting. You brought up something. Um, and maybe a lot of people listening or watching this will, at some time within their life, or many, maybe many times, they're going to struggle with with fear or doubt, even if they don't voice it inside. When you take a step of faith, sometimes it, it's easy to, to have self doubt, mm -hmm. and I've had to overcome that. And uh, even God, when he was when when he told uh, Joshua, mm -hmm. remember in the Joshua chapter one, he said, "Moses, my servant, is dead." Now Joshua, get up and lead these people. And then he begins to tell Joshua that he should meditate on 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 his word day and night. He said, "For and and that'll give you courage, not only courage but faith." And the Bible does say, "Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God." And you know what's interesting about faith is that um, the word of God talks about how that we're saved by grace, but it says, "Dream." It says, "We're saved by grace through faith." So faith even plays a role in our salvation. And then the Bible says we're to walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah. In other words, live. So yeah. it's a faith. It's a faith journey. Then the Bible also says how we're given a measure uh, that everyone has been given a measure of faith, and it's our responsibility. I've learned. I've learned. We've learned mm -hmm. in our ministry and our lives, and everything that we pray for, um, that we're responsible to exercise and grow our faith. That measure of faith that the Lord gave us, and he's given to each one of us. Those of you watching, you know, God's given you a measure of faith, and he doesn't want your faith to stay the same. He wants you to increase it and grow it. Just like, remember the parable of the talents? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And um, but what are some ways that you have stepped out in faith? Oh, goodness. Um, there's been so many different ways, so many different... Uh, st I, I, You know, we have that uh, a plaque at our house that says, I still remember the days when I prayed for everything that we now have. And so many of the ways we prayed for uh, physical healings, we've prayed for the salvation of our loved ones. Mm -hmm. uh, we've prayed for provision. Uh, we prayed for God to turn circumstances around uh, when things are overwhelming within our personal lives, our finances, so many different things, you know. And also, and I noticed that you don't like you don't you don't see it to believe it. You have to believe it before you see it. Mm. 
And that's the opposite yeah. of what the world says. They say, oh, I got to see it to believe it. But God says, believe it and you will see it. And I think all of our Christian life, we have had to take steps of faith into the unknown. Yeah. And and I think that's challenging for most people because you really do have to take a step outside of your comfort zone, right? Yes. To to walk by faith. And how have you done that? Well, a lot of different ways. Um, just trusting God for, uh, uh, especially within our ministry, you know, we've taken giant steps of faith. Um, and it'll apply to your life as mm -hmm. for a career. Maybe you don't know if you should step out and uh, get a new career or go to school or uh, educate yourself, whatever the case may be, when you pray and then you feel the peace of God, I always tell people that mm -hmm. peace is permission, you know, just like passion is permission from God, but so is the mm -hmm. peace of God. And and so then you have to step out of faith. And some of the ways for us within our lives, our ministry, um, we've stepped out six times in the last 24 years and mm -hmm. uh, believing God, we've, we've gotten different... Uh, buildings and we can never afford it, never had the money, but we always stepped out and we seen God uh, just show up and, and, and just miraculously provide. And he's a mm -hmm. provider, right? Yeah. And he has, he has done miracles. He has done miracles. He's always come through. And, and like in Hebrews, it says faith is a substance of things hoped for, right? Yes. The evidence of things not seen. And we have witnessed that because every single time we've stepped out, he has met us, right? He's met us in every single way in possible situations. Yeah. I mean, I could be here for days with all the miracles that we've had in, in our walk with God and also in our ministry. Oh, so many miracles, right? We've seen it in people's lives that we prayed for that had, uh, uh, had gotten a report about terminal cancer and we've seen them healed. Uh, we've seen breakthroughs and miracles. And then even when, when we were uh, trying to get uh, the building there when we were on Greenleaf, remember mm -hmm. how um, God gave us a miracle after miracle after miracle where um, the gentleman that w that was the owner that we were negotiating with, that uh, God had given him a dream just like he did with Abraham and Pharaoh. And he gave him a dream. And, and so we met with them and, and uh, it was just interesting because God can even use non-believers to fulfill his will. Isn't that true? Yeah. I've seen it happen. Yes. He's, he moves upon hearts. He can harden hearts and he can soften hearts. Yeah. And um, yeah, and we've seen it where that situation, there was so many miracles that we witnessed because like even just the parking situation, God provided. Yeah. Remember the time where we were sitting and we said, you know, we don't have enough parking. We can't, we can't go to the next step with this building. And remember we got a phone call? Yeah, we got a phone call from a gentleman that had heard what was taking place. And he said, you know, I don't like what the city, what, what, what they're, uh, how they're treating you and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, he goes, I want to see a church there. And he goes, I own this property and I have, uh, I own these properties and I have parking. And I'm going to give you the parking for $1 for 20 years. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm just going to bless you. And then... Um, and we said but you said you 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 were saying if you know God's going to make a way and it did seem like an impossible situation yeah. because who's going to lease us their parking lot for 20 years yeah. and then it roll over into another 20 years automatic automatic it's just and, amazing uh, yeah and and, amazing? and and it had to be a certain perimeter too yeah. 500 feet away but God moved upon that man's heart and supernaturally we've seen that he'll do it for you too it's just a matter of trusting him and stepping out I've come, we've come to realize that you have to step out because faith, the Bible says in the book of James, faith without action or faith without works is dead. He said, you say you got faith. I'll show you my faith by what I do, by my yeah. works. And we've exemplified that even now with, we're, we're living in that realm of faith right now. We stepped out. Oh my God, did we step out in faith? Um, and God has just been showing up, showing up, showing up, providing um, miraculously, um, you know, for everything that's taking place within our building, mm -hmm. we stepped out. And even with that, when we were negotiating, um, there was a, a, a big gap in the amount of finances and, and we came short and then they came back and said, we're going to give you equivalent, which would be equivalent mm -hmm. to uh, $2 million, $200,000 donation so that we could reach an agreement to be able to mm -hmm. step into that property. But for me, my perspective on that was we... We're stepping out by faith because God showed us that was our building. Yes. 
did we qualify for it? Did we were we did we feel ready for that next step? No. But we trusted and believed by faith that God would bring it to pass. And step by step, right? There were so many stories of how you you think, okay, how is this going to happen? And God comes through. And one of the reference points for me was even our neighbor, how he had a dream. <laughs> yeah. At first he was like, oh, I don't know if I want a church next to me. And, um, you know, he wasn't really too happy. <laughs> but he ha- I, I went to see him to talk to him, right? Yeah. The night before I went to talk to him, he had a dream. And the dream was that God scolded him. And he says, why are you coming against me? This is my will. And that I didn't even know he was a believer. Yeah, we didn't know. And he tells me, you know, I had to repent. And he says, and now I understand this is God's will. I do not come against God. And he says, and he says, and I'm here. I'm yeah. backing this up. It was a total change of heart. And and that for me, those are reference points too of how you pray and you believe and you you listen and you listen to the voice of God. I know God told me, go speak to him. I didn't have an appointment. Yeah. I went with another one of the sisters in the church, one of the ladies in the church, and it was a perfect time. He he was able to share that God spoke to him and God was showing me, hey, I'm with you. Mm. I'm working it all out. Yeah. And there's been time and time again where we've been able to see how God has moved on our behalf. Definitely. Mm-hmm. We have miracle after miracle, not only for us in our lives and in our ministry, but for people's lives where, where we've taught the people that trust God mm-hmm. to have faith that he, uh, it doesn't matter uh, even if you feel like you're unqualified or you're unable or you can't. We try to teach the people don't let mm-hmm. insecurities or complexes or fears or doubt hold you back from everything God has for your life. Yes. And and uh, we've seen people come into our rehab uh, uh, homes and God's turned their life around. Now they're business owners mm-hmm. and they're prosperous mm-hmm. and they're blessed and they're homeowners and yeah. And it just by faith, and God is pleased with faith. It reminds me of, Doreen, I was thinking right now, it reminded me of the story in the Bible how Jesus had sent the apostles on the ship to, on the lake to go to the other side. He, the Bible says he stayed to pray. And on the fourth watch, which is the darkest time, the Bible says that he came walking to them on the water. And it wasn't just calm water. The Bible talks about how there was, it was a storm. And yet he was walking, which is miraculous. Mm-hmm. But what is impossible with man is possible, possible. with God. God. And yeah. Peter cried out. And at first the Bible says that they were terrified. They thought it was the spirit, right? <laughs> yeah. Peter said, Lord, is that you? Yeah. Is that you? Then then let me come to you. And what did Peter do? He, he, he exemplified faith. He put one foot out mm-hmm. of the boat. And when his foot touched the water, he didn't sink. The other foot. And he began to walk on water what a miraculous miraculous miracle but it's heavy because um the the point that i'm trying to make is that the bible says when he took his eyes off of jesus and he began to look at the wind and the storm the bible says that he began to see and to see and he cried out lord save me and so the thing about faith is you got to keep your eyes on the lord jesus christ Mm. he's the author and the finisher Yes. I like what the Greek word, the finisher means perfecter. In other words, he'll grow our faith. He'll develop our faith mm-hmm. if we'll just step out and trust him. Mm-hmm. Since he's the author and finisher, perfecter, the grower of our faith. And, and he just wants us to step out. And and, mm-hmm. and I've realized that mm-hmm. sometimes we let circumstances get between us and God. Mm-hmm. And we allow the circumstance to be a block. So no matter what you may be going through, ever going through, don't let the circumstance dictate your actions. Don't let the circumstance cause fear or doubt in your life. Don't let the circumstance get between you and God. Mm-hmm. And that's what people do sometimes. So by faith, we 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 say, we're, uh, you know, that we're believing God for that miracle, for that breakthrough. And then what does the Bible say, honey? It, it's heavy because it says that we serve a God who who is able to call things that are not as though they were. Mm-hmm. And that's what God wants us to do. It says we're to be imitators yeah. of God as dear children. And 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 that's what God wants us to do. Yeah. And there are things that grow our faith. I mean, faith doesn't just grow without action. Yeah. I mean, we need to understand that pain 
trials, troubles, testings, and challenges grow our faith. Yes. And so we can't back down. And those times, it's when we grow the most in the area of our faith. Yeah. And sometimes people allow that, like, you know, like you said earlier, doubt and fear. But also, you know, they, they don't want to go through the trials or the <laughs> testing and being able like to to put all of their hope and trust and faith in God. And that's when you begin to know him in a new way and you'll be able to see that your faith is growing, right? That's so true. I think those are the, the times where um, my faith has grown the most. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and in the Bible it says too, right? It says clearly that right in those times yeah. you learn to yeah. put your, to persevere and right, you learn and you learn to see how God is the one, yeah. the only one that can really get you through and he's always, show himself so strong. Yes, he's always the fourth man in the fire. Mm -hmm. There's an example, you know, they were trusting God, mm -hmm. you know, they said, our God is able to deliver us, but even if he does it, we will not bow down. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got to be like, trusting God with that kind of faith that no matter what, you know, and he always shows up. He's the fourth man in the fire. Mm -hmm. He always makes a way where there is no way. He'll bring down the walls of Jericho. That's all faith, mm -hmm. obedience. Yes. You now, faith requires action. Isn't that heavy? Mm -hmm. You know, and you know like how I always talk about about how God has this toolbox, if you would. Mm -hmm. And one of his favorite tools when he's, when because we're all, all under construction, he's always working in our lives. Mm -hmm. Even before we get saved, he, his love is wooing us and, and pursuing us. I can look back and remember that at different times, situations in my life because of the lifestyle I was living, um, I really didn't know God. And But I could see how his, his love and mercy and grace were protecting me and, and his love was pursuing us, right? Mm -hmm. And then once we give our lives to the Lord, that measure of faith, we start believing him for little things and he starts growing. And, and then what ha when at, at the set time, like you were talking about, uh, circumstances and painful things we go through, I would say he opens up his toolbox and one of his mm -hmm. favorite tools mm -hmm. is pain because mm -hmm. he uses pain. There's different types of pain. You know, it could be pressure. It could be a circumstance where you don't know how God's going to come through. Uh, maybe someone you love is going through something that is breaking your heart. Um, uh, it could be a, a lot of different things. But And when we feel that pain or the pressure of that, that's where we got to have faith and that's come to doubt and fear, you know, but to trust God, that he's going to turn it around, that God is faithful. God is so faithful, you know, and he, he's moved by our faith, right? Yeah. He's moved by our yeah, faith. Yeah, he's moved by our faith. It's, he's moved by our faith. It's sometimes we think that, and I know he, he cares about our emotions. He cares deeply about our emotions, but yeah. faith is what moves his hand. Yeah, not emotion, because mm -hmm. the Bible says that without faith, you can't please him. You know, and so uh, he wants us to trust him. I remember the story when Jesus was going from Bethany to the mm -hmm. to the temple in Jerusalem, and Bethany, about the scholars say somewhere around three point two miles away from uh, from the temple, and so they were walking, and the Bible says something interesting. It says Jesus was was hungry, mm -hmm. and he seen a fig tree, so he went off course where they off the path, went up to the fig tree because uh, the Bible says it was clear that he was hungry, and he noticed that the fig tree had no fruit mm -hmm. and then he cursed the fig tree and, 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 and then he went back with the apostles. They went to the temple. He did his teaching. They went, walked back to Beth and he spent the night. The next morning as they were walking, Peter looked and he said, look, Lord, the fig tree you cursed and it's heavy has withered from its roots. Wow. And then Jesus used that to teach him something about faith, right? And then he talked about, you know, whoever would, would, would say unto that mountain, that mm -hmm. pain, that circumstance, that situation that we're all going to face in life. He said, you speak to your mountain and, and, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe. And here's the key. Believe what you say. So speaking faith, it's not enough just to think faith. It, we also have to speak it, and then we have to have action along with speaking in our faith. So if you're going through something today and you need to apply faith to some area of your life where you're trusting God, you're believing God for maybe a, a financial miracle, a breakthrough, whatever, whatever, a healing, you're praying for someone, 
then speak to your mountain, speak it out by faith, and then then step out and trust God because the God responds to that and God will move. We've seen it, right? Mm-hmm. Over and over. We're seeing it right now. Yes. We're having to believe God for yep. miracles. Oh, we just had a meeting last night and uh, we're challenging everybody in faith. Step out of mm-hmm. faith, 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 mm-hmm. faith. Yeah, and I think that sometimes we feel like we even wrestle with it. Even when you're growing your faith, I, I know that there's um, a time period when you're growing your faith too, and it doesn't feel so good <laughs> because God wants you to step out or he wants you to to continue to grow and exercise that muscle of faith, right? Yeah. I, I've had experiences, and I know you've had experiences, where you're wrestling with it. Like when you know God is requiring more, he's asking you to do something out yeah. of your comfort zone or, or to take a leap, but to dive in. And um, you know what? Recently that happened to you, huh? He yeah. gave you even a choice, right? Yeah. I, I was wrestling with... Uh, you could increase or you could decrease. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was wrestling with God over uh, this next move that we knew that we that was his perfect will. and But because of certain things that I had went through uh, at, at the other property, at Greenleaf, at the building... Uh, it kind of caused a little bit of doubt and a little bit of fear, even though uh, I know God is faithful. He's always showed up. But then I, I, I kind of came to a place where I was wrestling with God. Yeah, it's easy to be comfortable. Yeah, I think a lot of people out there probably can relate with that, that you, you can become comfortable and you don't want to take another risk. Yeah, But you can't settle for somewhere along the way if you want to grow in your faith. Yeah. Faith will push you, right? Like when you start to fuel that faith, it pushes you beyond your normal limits, right? To get out of that comfort zone. Yeah. And you had to do that. You had to make a choice. Yeah, you know? I wrestle with God. Because I realize God doesn't live in the comfort zone. Mm-hmm. He don't. He's in the faith zone. Ooh, he wants us to, so he, he doesn't, he doesn't. And I've seen over the years, ministers and 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 people in their lives they they settle they mm-hmm. they settle and i've always tried to keep myself in a in a place of uh, uh spiritual tension mm-hmm. where where i where i allow god to to provoke me and i allow the holy spirit to convict me to so that i can constantly be stepping out to please the lord and fulfill everything he has mm-hmm. uh, for my life and uh, for our our lives and for we see the bible says that um all the days ordained for us were written in this book before we ever lived one of them, right? And then in Jeremiah, that's in uh, Psalms 139, 16, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, mm-hmm. plans to prosper, give you a hope in the future. So God has already pre-wrote our life story, hon. Mm-hmm. And so so that means that he's already written things he wants us to accomplish and things he wants us to do. And sometimes if we have fear or doubt or we settle someplace along the way, instead of going all the way to our own Canaan land, to our own mm-hmm. promised land, to God's perfect will, uh, we could settle for less than God's best. And I, and if you could do it on that. your own, what does my dad always say? What does Pastor Sonny always say? If you can do it on your own. <laughs> you don't need God. You don't need God. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, that, that place of saying, okay, God, you say go left, I go left. You say go right, I go right. You say go forward, I go forward. And and it and it takes that knowing him and having that relationship with him. I think the way to really strengthen your faith is to get closer to God. And the closer you get to God, the more you trust him, right? Yeah. yeah. The more you depend upon him, the more you want to please him, the more you think like him, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And um that's to me is like, you know, those are inward things. Nobody sees the inward person, but God sees the inward person. Yeah. And that's where faith is not only cultivated, but that's where faith begins to grow is in here and in here, right? Yes. And then from there, you begin to to step out and having that perspective, that God perspective, that God confidence. Yeah. You know? And even though we're human, right? We're human. We are all human. We wrestle with doubt, fear, uh, you know, it it could be sometimes really difficult, but yet, where do we go? We go, right? Yeah, we go to the very presence of God, the throne of grace. And we also can reflect back. Yeah. I think reflecting back helps a lot, too. When I read about the children of Israel, I get so mad. 
<laughs> because I'm like, he, their their shoes never never got messed up. Okay, they were they had manna from heaven. Okay, okay uh, yeah. they had they he gave them meat when they wanted meat. I water mean, from a rock. Water from a <laughs> rock. Open yeah. the Red Sea, and I mean all these great miracles right in front of them, and they forgot. Yeah. They kept forgetting, and they didn't reflect on. And and if you're watching today, then we want you to know that faith is what moves the hand of God. And so whatever you're trusting God for, just believe, trust him, and you'll see his miracles. We've seen it in our lives, and I know you have, you've seen it in your life. And so we want to just challenge you today that um, step out of faith, continue to step out. Don't, don't settle. Don't settle. Keep pressing forward to God's best for your lives. <laughs>